Good evening, church family. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in on a late Friday night for Pastor Tim. And a little bit of scripture and a little bit of lyrics and a deep thought and prayer when it comes to scripture and our lives. Today, I drew uh, a line of lyrics from Andy Graham, who in 2019 releases the ballad, Best of You. In the lyrics, um, he describes this, uh, this sense of being in love with somebody regardless of their behaviors, regardless of their worst days, because he says, I'm in love with who you are. And you, you're in love with me. He begins with, I've met your demons, but they do not scare me. I know there'll be angels once they learn to fly. I hold this as an example of St. Paul, who talks to virtually everybody with great honesty and with great candor, as he describes himself as someone who... Um, was violent and who was on the attack of those who followed the way, who followed Christ. And he asks for redemption, not just from them, but from God. In today's scripture, we read from, I read from a Psalm 102, verses 2 to 3, 25 to 29. A humble, a grateful, a thoughtful and prayerful writer shares this prayer. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Turn your ear toward me on the day when I call, speak, call, speedily answer me. And so this is someone who's pouring out their heart to God and in hopes that God forgives them, that God shows mercy. But God says, you are still loved by me. Now I turn to the to the words of Graham where he says that we, we want God to say this to us. That what I'm saying is I get you. I get you. I get you writer of Psalms. I get you St. Paul. I get you person from the 21st century who yearns for forgiveness, reconciliation, and wholeness with God. And a part of that and along with that loves the world, chooses to praise, chooses to reverence, chooses to serve God. So often we feel like our history keeps us uh, as a punishment from being in relationship with God. And so the Psalm says that from the very beginning, people have felt this way and they have earnestly come to God and asked for forgiveness and the answer has been yes. In addition to yes, God calls those who repent, turn toward God to a deeper, more meaningful life, a life of mission and ministry, a life that builds hope in the world. Andy Graham is in this romantic relationship, but these words of love, these, this expression of I take you as you are, take me as I am, is what we so desire in relationships. We yearn for someone to look at us in our openness and our completeness and say yes. Yes to who we are and what we're about. Aware that we come with stuff. Get more redeemable, we're lovable. We are God's sacred, holy children. Graham says this, he writes, because the best of me loves the best of you. That's a two-way street when it comes to us and God. The best, the very depth of our illuminated heart loves God. And the most illuminated being, Christ, God in the flesh says, I love you. I care for you. I want to nurture this relationship with you and I and with the world. You can trust in me and I'll trust in you. 
Graham writes, because the best of me loves the very best of you. St. Paul writes about this in his letter to the Thessalonians. In uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, verses, then in verses 3 through 4, he writes, For you yourselves know that our reception among you was not without effect. So his pouring out of his heart is accepted with love, accepted with respect, accepted in a way that people start to turn toward Christ and grow their lives. Paul continues, our exhortation was not from delusion or impure motives, nor did it work through deception, right? The best of me loves the best of you, even though you know who I am and what I'm about. Yet we kind of continue to be side by side. He says, you know, you've seen my dark side and dance with my shadow. You've never run from, run from a fight. This is what a, a real relationship's all about in this, this faith journey where we know each other and we love each other. That means both sides have to be in love in a real way, in a, in a Christ-like way in a way that uh, gives space to be who we are in our relationship in love with Christ. He continues, but as we were judged worthy by God to be entrusted with the gospel, why right? the good news of Jesus Christ, that is how we speak, not as trying to please human beings, but rather God who judges our hearts. In a world that um, cancels, in a world that judges, in a world that um, sometimes seems completely unreasonable, Paul is aware of that 2,000 years ago. And he gives us advice that if we do um, live this faith with Christ, we have this opportunity to love one another, to earnestly live out this relationship with God and with each other. One that holds each other sacred, holds this promise of forgiveness all the way back to the Psalms. It gives us hope that says to us, here I am, God. I'm working at my best. I'm giving my best to you to meet your best in the world. This is ultimately how we flourish, how we grow, and how we move beyond our demons to take flight as angels, as saints, as siblings in the life with Christ. We all probably have something that could be referred to in the first century as demons. But God is not afraid. True love in Christ, true love, is not afraid of demons. It nurtures, nurture, nurtures and nourishes so that we can take flight in this vast, beautiful life with God. On this Friday night, I say thanks for tuning in. Thanks for um, being here with me. Thanks for um, seeing that uh, in our, all of our great imperfection is this journey toward perfection. Perfection in God's love. Perfection in faith, hope, and love. Have a blessed weekend. Know that I hold you um, in prayer always. And remember that God loves you, and so do I.